Jai Sachidan. Yeah, it was over. Okay. Jai, Jai Sachidan. And everybody, welcome to English. It's a Akavignan uh, Satsang Swadhyay. Me, can you follow the statement? Namo Vitra Gai. Namo Vitra Gai. Namo Rihantanam. Rihantanam. <coughs> Namo Siddhanam, Namo Siddhanam, Namo Ayariyanam, Namo Ayariyanam, Namo Vajjayanam, Namo Vajjayanam, Namo Loe Sava Sahunam, Namo Loe Sava Sahunam, Eso Panchanamukkaro, Eso Panchanamukkaro, Sava Bhava Panasano Sava Bhava Panasano Mangalanam Chasavasim Mangalanam Chasavasim Padamam Hawaii Mangalam Padamam Hawaii Mangalam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai Om Namashivai Om Namashivai Jai Satchitanam. Jai Satchitanam. <coughs> Jai Satchitanam, everybody. Good morning. Jai Satchitanam. Jai Satchitanam, Gopala Krishna. Namaste. You have a question, Gopala Krishna? Yes. Go Can ahead. I ask now? Yeah. Uh, I would like to know what is Baba Dara Bhagwan's advice on how to create a peace of mind. How to create what? Peace of mind. Because today we are living in a world we are full of uh, you know, like uh, problems and conflicts. How to create peace of mind? You want it? Yeah. <clears throat> Today's Burning problem is people have too many desires and at the same time they have laid obstruction, obstacles in other people's life. So as karmic result, outcome, what actually happens, their desires don't get fulfilled. And that too, these the quantum of desire is enormous. So in this scenario, what happens? <coughs> it's like the karmic uh, delivery mechanism also has its own limitation because it says like whatever was caused gets paid or it gets returned to you. But if it is not caused, at the same time, people have laid ample of obstacles in other people's life. And due to that, these obstacles come in their way and desires are not getting fulfilled. So that creates a lot of disturbance, mental disturbance, psychological disturbance, depression, this is very common nowadays. <clears throat> and the remedy what they seek and what they get through medical means is extremely dangerous because truly their problem is not solved. They get deeper and deeper into it. The amount of medication, quantum of medication keep increasing they are like human, living humans, but like dead bodies because their mental abilities are so much suppressed that at times they can barely keep awake. And even while they are awake, they are not in their full capacity. Their capacities are drastically suppressed. And in this condition, People at home in their surroundings, they get very much disturbed. They don't know what to do. And by any reason, 
if they stop the medication, which is also the case very common, then the anxiety that pops up, they are totally unable to manage and the situation becomes really dire. So here Dada Bhagwan, out of his own experience of several lives, he has given wonderful solution. First thing, he has given uh, the three mantra that drives away the obstacles of our life. That is materialist desires. And at the same time, because it is, it also includes uh, obeisance to respect to those people who are in the path of liberation and are much ahead. Some of them are already liberated, already liberated, and some are great instrument for liberation of several. So in that case, when we express and offer our obeisance, our respect, our namaskar, then the result is all the angels, they shower their blessings and the obstacles gradually they are overcome, they are removed, and <clears throat> people start having their inner peace. At the same time, one more thing, the prayers what Dada Bhagwan has given, it, it helps us really worship heartily these great people of the universe, and these people, they are on the path of non-doership. And that is why all the angels, they are eager and ready to help them. So whoever who follow them, who worship them, these angels really support them. And that's how their obstacles are removed. The other obstacle is they don't come across right guidance of life, that is right spirituality, right vision of life, right science of life. And with these prayers, which in fact, uh, it does a lot of self-correction also of all the mistakes that are committed knowingly or unknowingly. So <clears throat> it really gives us the result that your materialist, uh, your material desires also gradually get fulfilled at the same time. Your spiritual accomplishment also is achieved. So this is a wonderful thing. And Dada Bhagavan has said that whatever medication or whatever remedy is needed to, to the present day problem, I have put all those medicine in these five prayers, what he has given, namely Trimantra, Namaskar Vidhi, No Column Nine Diamonds, Prayer to the Pure Self, and Dada Bhagavan Asim Jeje Karu, the direct worship to of our inner God, and God in every living being. So with these prayers, at the same time, he has also given wonderful <clears throat> prayer for correction, that is correcting your mistakes, past mistakes or present mistakes which are committed knowingly or unknowingly. And that really helps us come out of our problem. So that is, that is the thing. Jai Satyadana. Uh, please unmute. Unmute, unmute. Please unmute. Oh, okay, very nice explanation. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel we are not uh, content with what we possess. We are always looking beyond what we have. And that is where the problem lies. Instead of looking for materialistic benefits, if we look more spiritually, I think we can lead a happier life. Actually, <clears throat> actually the thing is, it is not that we are not contented 
the problem is we have not got the right thing and the right thing is the right understanding and the right science of life and once that is known then all these uh, wild desires that keep popping up and driving us mad even if these desires come you won't be driven away by them you know that if something is coming up in your mind then it is coming in the pipeline so what you must do is put all your positive efforts refrain and stay away from all negativities any negativity that may pop up through your mind speech and body if they show up then correct themselves so in this whole process that inner uh, satisfaction is also there and you also your desires also get fulfilled so it is like we have not got the right thing if we get the right thing then all those desires they go away you they are not there they won't bother you but because of our mistakes and lack of right understanding we run around and not just running around our approach is so much negative that we are contradicting ourselves all the time so that that contradiction must go and the path the right understanding what dada bhagwan has given which he has lived himself for several lives and in this life also he has lived especially the nine diamonds what he had said that he followed those nine diamond prayer for 40 years while he started practically like while he was 10 years old and it gradually developed into uh, in an elaborate prayer and he said he had been doing and at the age of 50, 50 that is why he, uh, in the year 1958 when all the uh, clouds of ignorance and mistakes they were cleared the light of god opened and it showed him everything that was happening in the world blatant right in front of him so that's how he all his egoism was removed and with that egoless state it is said that uh he lived for almost like four years without revealing his inner uh enlightenment and it is said that what he has said that for those four years that is from 58 to 62 when the first time this knowledge was revealed and open to people <clears throat> he did a lot of correction of his past mistake whatever was there and it naturally came out and that's how we all got benefited even now and it is said that it's going to help people for a very very long time in fact it is also said that all the present religion are right are good but the the bad part the misunderstanding part or the whatever is wrong if that gets removed which is going to happen eventually with the understanding of net science pure science what dada bhagwan has revealed and all religions they will work at that place very effective and going to give peace to whoever who follows all those religions so it is not you don't have to change your religion but have the right perspective of that religion and that is the scientific vision behind that religion which was there in the heart of the person who originated it in his time and when that gets open naturally it's going to benefit one and all without any differences jai satyadana Thank you so much. Jai Satchidanand. Jai Satchidanand. Kashyap Bhai. 
जय सचिदान एवरी वन रजनी जी जय सचिदान दीपक आनंद जी जय सचिदान दीपक आनंद जी आई हैव सेंट यू अ पोस्टर व्हाट्सएप कैन यू प्लीज शुड आई रीड इट वन मिनट ओके लास्ट पोस्टर सो हेर इट से संसार में सुख तो है ही नहीं लेकिन भगवत उपाय करोगे तो कुछ शांति रहेगी और ज्ञान के उपाय से सदा शांति रहेगी इन द इन द वर्ल्ड देर इज नो हैपीनेस बट डूइंग भगवत उपाय मीन्स गॉडली सोल्यूशन यू विल गेट सम पीस एंड विद द ज्ञान सोल्यूशन यू विल गेट परमानेंट पीस So I want to ask, what is this Bhagwat? Why? What is the godly solution? What is, first of all, the first statement what Dada made that there is no happiness in the world, in this mortal world. All this happiness are projected happiness. What it means, you will feel happy if you have projected. that way like if you have believed that there is happiness in smoking then you will till you keep smoking you feel happy and once that smoking is not there then you feel disturbed and you will seek you will look for smoking whenever you want happiness that way in relation to drinking and all of the things even the worldly happiness because if there was the true happiness lasting happiness then all the enlightened ones would have followed that path the materialist way of life but all the materialist way of life is based on your projection only in the sense whatever you have believed in that will make you happy if things come against your belief then your happiness is gone so first thing is that and then what it means bhagavad upai means right solution right solution what it means you with the right understanding you will eradicate eliminate all contradictions from your life for example you want to be happy but you keep hurting others then you are contradicting your own self you want to be happy but you are contradicting so you will never get that happiness you want to get good marks but you don't want to study then that contradiction is not going to fetch you good marks so all these contradictions must be removed and dada has highlighted very nicely that you want anything then you give that you want happiness you give happiness to others and you will get it so that is uh bhagavad upai bhagavad upai means knowledge bhag means light knowledge right understanding and solution means knowledge based solution right understanding of the worldly bhag, bhag, uh, yeah. you said bhag is with, uh, uh, this uh, uh, light means light light knowledge light bhag okay knowledge light so if you do the right uh because the worldly life or materialist life is also based on it it has its own science so what it says whatever you want you give and you will get so he says if you want happiness then you give happiness but in the process of getting happiness if you keep hurting others then that that is going to come back to you so you want to be happy you give happiness and every time you end up giving suffering to anyone then you feel sorry correct yourself then eventually you will get happiness and it is finally said that nan that is the wisdom of right knowledge absolute knowledge and that knowledge will is the solution which will give you permanent happiness that happiness which will not go which will be with you and you will be able to face all the results of 
your karmic projection. So even in the most uh, painful situation of worldly life, you will experience that inner peace and happiness. At the same time, in the fleeting happiness, what you get from the materialist world, you won't get distracted because that inner permanent happiness, what you experience through the right knowledge, wisdom of right knowledge, will always keep you at peace. And you said, you said if you want happiness, you have to give happiness. But this, this happiness, we are talking about permanent happiness. So the, the godly solution you said... That to, is related to materialist world, materialist yeah. happiness. But what happens is usually is that we, 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 we are not so adept in uh, giving happiness because we That's don't... What, uh, our, our we, that conviction is not there, but when you get the right understanding, that conviction will open and you when you start living your life as per that understanding, you start getting that happiness. For example, we talked with someone and we, we, we uh, uh, someone gets hurt with that, you know, and we don't know uh, how, what, how we should talk with that person so that he is not offended. Uh, we want that we, he doesn't get offended, but we don't know how to talk without... That's right. So, person. when you pray that I want to talk nicely, I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling through my speech, then that itself will correct your speech. Yeah, so, but uh, uh, but it might not be immediate what we miss, uh, what it, it coming... But it, might, it might be what? It, it, it may not come immediately in effect, you know, that I want to talk... It is not, other. because you are on the right path. You, you are on the right path, so when you start giving, you start getting immediately. So, for example, I want to speak uh, in a way that other person does not get offended, he feels happy if he wants me. So, but... But immediate, I have this bhavna, but it, it is not coming in effect immediately. No, so, but you already have the understanding that why this bad thing is coming to me. So you will start correcting. Yeah, I, I start with correcting. That, with that understanding, you won't get driven away by those negativities or that suffering that come to you. Without yeah. that understanding, you will get disturbed and you will start reacting. In the sense, uh, you will retaliate one way or the other. Yeah, which retaliation is, which is, is not retaliation is not there. But what I'm saying? No, no, I'm not saying. But without this understanding, that retaliation will be there. Yeah, without. And with this understanding, you will start correcting. So the you you yes, are saying at times, the process at times, is starting. You are saying the process starts and it will, yes, and it will exactly go. exactly. At times you may become impatient. That yes. possibility is there. But when you cool down, you start again following the right way. What okay. Dada has shown. Yeah, right. Understood. Okay. Thank you right. very much. Jai Satchidana. Meet. Jay Sachidanan, I wanted to ask, uh, can you describe the attributes of the soul and how can we experience them? The most striking attribute of the soul is the knowledge power, what it has. And the non-soul element has only activity part. So, the body, we can say, the body self is result of karmic projection and that karmic projection is doership projection. So body self keep doing. You look at our mind, keep thinking. You look at our speech, it keeps talking. You look at our body, it keep acting. So all activities are due to projected doership. And the knowledge part is only attributed to the soul. All activity part is attributed to the body self. This is that. And the other one you can say is 
perpetual happiness. So that true happiness lie not in activity because activity is like whatever you have believed that this is good, then you will feel good when you do that activity. But if not, then you will feel very much disturbed. But when you have this understanding and that right knowledge, wisdom of right knowledge you acquire, then because as individual, you at times say, I know. And at other times you say, I did. So both these attributes are not of the same entity. The knowing power or the knowing functionality is of the soul. So at times the soul is the true knower, has the power of knowing and you claim I know. And all the activities are body self based. They are of the body self and you say I did. So in both the cases, if you claim doership of the body self, you will wander in the four life forms. And if you claim the power doership of knowledge that is knowing, then you can liberate from all this wandering and reach that state of absolute knowledge. And that is possible. And with that right understanding, what is going to happen? You will free yourself from all the doership, projected doership of the body self. Finally, reaching that state of absoluteness, that is absolute knowledge, that is only knowledge without any doership, without any claim or uh, ownership of the body self or the body self activities. That's how you get liberated as I. Otherwise that I egoism has to wander and depending on the projection, what it does, it will come across happiness and unhappiness. So bouts of unhappiness and happiness, they keep coming and going depending on the projected doership, right? So what truly really happens as science of liberation reveals, you better understand the qualities of the soul and the non-soul. That is the body self and the soul. Today, as you believe I am as egoism, you claim doership of knowing and you claim doership of activities of the body self both. That is knowing and doing both, which are totally separate. And when that science is known, understood and experienced, then naturally you get freed from all the doership uh, projection of the body self, then what remains is whatever is caused as part of the past karma, you have to pass through the effects of those karma without causing new karma. And that's how eventually get, you get liberated. So everything, everything we experience in the world, right? So it's not the body that's knowing, it's the, it's the soul inside that has the knowing power, right? Not that. It is because of the knowing power of the soul that ego has power okay. of knowing. Because what the soul knows is not available to us. What we know as ego, we know it through the five senses. Mm -hmm. But when you have that perception open that what is that knowledge which uh, the soul knows, then you will free yourself from the five senses perception. 
Do you understand? Yeah. Because what you see and believe through the five senses is what you have believed based mm -hmm. on your belief, projected belief, not as it is. So only one who has known, understood and experienced that knowledge, that pure knowledge, when he reveals and when you come across that person who reveals that knowledge through his experience words, that vision opens within you of that impartial knowledge, not projected or make-believe knowledge. Do you understand? Because five senses, what you believe something, I may not believe that. What I believe, you may not believe, or others may not believe. But that pure knowledge and pure vision sees and make an experience of all the worldly beliefs as it is. So the five sense experience and beyond five sense experience or that experience of knowledge as it is, they're totally different. But when that initiates, it totally ends up in absoluteness. That is total freedom. But first freedom is experienced in the presence of the happiness and unhappiness. And finally, you free yourself by balancing out all the credit and debit of karmas. You free yourself from all the karmas that is when the body becomes free and you become free. So that is the process which egoism has to pass through with right vision. And that vision is important. And in today's time, with what we get from Dada Bhagwan, that Dada Bhagwan vision is absolute vision. And with that vision, we can easily without having burden of any kind of doership on the body self side, understand the true science of life and free ourselves totally from the doership aspect of the body self, which is self-acting through the natural power of Vyavasthit, what he has revealed. So you are now present in the present state with that knowledge, wisdom of knowledge, your projection stops. And when that projection stops, what you project through his uh, precepts or agnas that help you free from all the karmic effects. Because in today's time, when there is no unity among our mind, speech, and body, we are unable to have the result of the right knowledge. That is, total freedom is not possible now. But if we can have our I mean, birth in a place where the times are appropriate and uh, absolutes are present, then through their vision, we will be able to free ourselves, read their absolute state as what is reached by their absolute like we can, we can go to Mahavidya Kshetra through the understanding what Tata Bhagavan has given and we can free ourselves truly and we can experience that right now itself. That is the thing. There's also like other attributes, right? So like uh, infinite vision, infinite strength. Can you explain those ones as well? Yeah, vision means to understand. Vision relates to understanding. What is that understanding? Because the, the, the knowing power is the only power with which we can understand what is what. So the... It is said that the world, the universe is made up of six eternals. And of those six eternals, one is pure soul. 
which has this power of knowing and power of perception. Perception, perception power is the vision power. That is to understand what is what. Mm -hmm. So it can understand that I have the knowing power and it can understand all the five other entities that don't have the power of knowing. And whatever its power is there, it can understand. So like one is the matter, other is uh, motion, which helps it to move. Then the third one is inertia or steadiness. Then that is where if you keep moving, then you continue to move. But unless that entity walks on you, you will not stop. Mm -hmm. So that is the third entity. The fourth one is space. Now space, it has infinite accommodation power. It accommodates. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. But space is there. And all this movement or motion is time-based. Mm -hmm. So the fifth one comes as time. So all these five elements and its functionality, wherein none of the functionality of other is grabbed or taken over, taken away by the one. So each five element has their own functionality and they work of its own. So that's a wonderful thing. That is the power of understanding. That is vision power. And when that understanding is over, complete understanding is reached, then that vision itself gets converted into knowledge. So it is like you have now understood, nothing else remains to be understood. So now you reach that state of knowledge. So finality is knowledge, absolute knowledge. Regarding strength, strength is like the power to know. It is also said that matter has infinite power. All these activities of the universe, what we see around, is the activity, the power of the matter, the power of hydrogen bombs, and all these funny arsenal, what these people have developed, whatever. It is excess use of intellect into matter and the misuse of that matter for destroying the world life. But that is very dangerous. The reason is if I eliminate someone, then how am I going to leave? Someone will eliminate me. Anyway, so this is the idea. So the way matter is having infinite strength, what the strength of soul is infinite multiplied by infinite. Because it can understand the infinite power of matter and it can make use of that in a positive way. Help you make use in a positive way. Did you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So even if you just contemplate on those qualities, then it will give you a lot of peace and uh, it can help you come out gradually and reach that that conviction that yes, I must know this, I must have this knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it is said, when you know the knower which has power to know, everything will get known to you. So it says, know the knower, everything will get known. But we don't know the knower as ego, I. So in the presence of the knower, we say, I don't know. Yeah. We also tell others, you don't know. That is 
the first thing which we can do to ourselves and to others. So with that power of knowledge, and when we come across that enlightened person who has known the soul as it is, who has experienced, who has understood and experienced, he is experiencing that soul power and living as soul, equal as state, then he can bestow us, bless us with that vision of knowledge. And with that right understanding, we can also get liberated following his footsteps, his precepts or agnans. Jay Satyana. Jay Satyana. Satyana. Hey, Deepakaraji, there's no question, but I have a question. Uh, you earlier said about uh, the five tools of the other Bhagavan. And uh, out of those, you know, Asim JJ Kar and Nine Dive, how? What's the science behind uh, getting inner peace? But before that, uh, Akshay, the question will take his question. Surely, yes. Akshay, bye. Jai Satyananda Ji. Jai Satyananda. My question is related to uh, the discussion we had with me um, around attribute of soul. Uh, one thing you you mentioned. that knowing power is function of soul, all activities are of body. What, uh, how, how we got caught into all of this is because we claim the doership. Now, my question is, how did the doership, the first doership started, right? Uh, is it a natural process too, in which we, we got caught? Very good. Let us analyze that when, let us understand your journey of this life itself, when you were born. So you came with the bundle of karma and appropriately you got the family and you are in that family. What did they do? The first thing they did to you is they gave you a name. Right? right? And whoever who came to you, whoever who came to see you, even your own parents, what did they do? What did they do to you? They called you by the, your name. Right. Akshay, Akshay, Akshay. Just imagine as a little born baby, what do you understand by Akshay? I, I put up, uh, and I mean, I mean, in a very jokingly way, that somebody is bombarding with those words, those, that particular sound, because Akshay doesn't mean anything to you, but the same sound, the same, I will say, the cannonball of those, that sound, they kept on bombarding at you. Akshay, Akshay, Akshay. So now you are listening. You are not a dumb guy. You are a living person with right. the senses. But those senses are like you see and you listen. And the listening is very important because uh, seeing doesn't come up all that. Because then you are not looking at things initially. But nowadays it is seen that kids, when they're born, like within one or two days or even on the first or second day itself, they start looking at people like that. Otherwise, I know I have seen kids during our time when I was little grown up and when I used to see those kids, then they are not looking at you. You keep on looking, you, you try to like drive their attention, but they don't, they don't uh, recognize or they don't uh, respond to your signals at all. After a few days, they start uh, responding. So what the idea is, you are listening. Continuously bombarded with Akshay, 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 Akshay. So 
eventually what happens? You're growing, your senses, your body is growing. So I will say subconsciously, unknowingly, you come to know that Akshay means something related to me. So now anyone calls or say that word Akshay, you will see in that direction. Someone calls Akshay, you'll see in this direction. Akshay, this direction. And then you're growing also. Right. Your understanding is also growing. You are watching your mom. I asked, I asked my mother very recently. She said, my baby has started saying, mama, mom, 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 mom. I said, how come? How does she know this? She said, I taught her. <laughs> so I, what I'm saying, so all these, the basic speech, it, that's why it is said mother tongue. Right? right? So to make the journey short, people surrounding us, <clears throat> they have imparted this knowledge, this understanding to us. Akshay, Akshay, and that's how you have understood that I am Akshay. So now when you are growing, then you come to know that oh, I am a boy. Then say, I, I am we are Patel, we are Hindu. All those beliefs, all those beliefs, they they pop on you. They they pop on you. They, just a moment. moment, moment, moment. Okay. okay, sorry. So that's how you have acquired that I. Right. So that I, wherever it is connected, whatever Akshay does, you will say, I do. Because you don't say Akshay does. You, because your I is connected or related to Akshay. So wherever your belief of I is, and whatever... Whatever it does, then you will say, I do. So I say, I do, I wake up, I play, everything what Akshay does, you will say, I do. Do you understand? So then, same way when you see others, mama is doing this, daddy is doing this, that way. So that wherever I is, that you will become the uh, doer of that activity. Same way, when you get to know I am pure soul and that conviction becomes firm and clear, then you will recognize everything that Akshay does, thinking, speaking, doing, etc. They are not mine because your I is now connected to pure soul. So what you see is I know and I see, and I remain in my bliss. Did you understand? But that doesn't come immediately because of the speech factor. What it means, Akshay says, I did. I went to job. At that time, you don't really, I mean, aware that Akshay went to job. But gradually, wherever you are saying I and my, then I will go to uh, pure soul, wherever it is. So when you say I went to office, then you will immediately say Akshay went to office. You will say, my tummy is hurting then you feel hurt, but when you are aware that who, 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 whose tummy is that? Oh, that is Akshay's tummy. And, but when you say, my tummy is hurting, then 
you will gradually come to that understanding, oh, it is Akshay, tummy is hurting. Because when your daughter says, Daddy, I'm sleepy, then you know that Divya is sleepy. But when you say, I am sleepy, then you're not very conscious about that separation. But gradually that will come the way Divya is saying, and you know it is Divya who is saying, because she says the same word. She doesn't say Divya wants to sleep. She says, I want to sleep. So same way when Akshay will say, I want to sleep, you will know that Akshay wants to sleep. So that, that will happen. Eventually that will happen. So then that worship will now go. How it penetrated because wherever your eye was, got connected, you connected all the doership of that eye into yours as I am doing. And same way, others. Okay, Dr. Bhai. Okay, Jai Satchidana. Jai Satchidana. Aarti Bhai. Jai Satchidana. Uh, uh, my question is a bit complicated if I can get you. Uh, whenever we are tracing some particular end result and in the process of that, we are believing in Vyavasthit, right? But before we get the end result, there is a sequence of events happening which itself is also a part of Vyavasthit, but still right. we are suffering a lot during the during all the processes and then can it be said that we are into the moment because still we are getting into future only at that time also we are thinking of future most of the times and still we are saying it to be a part of vyavasthit and still we are waiting for some particular vyavasthit to happen so right. actually what is that you know this thinking process is also of RT. Yes. Not yours. Yes, not imagine, mine. Imagine, I as pure soul as mirror. Yes. So your I push yourself into that mirror. Yes. Not in RT. Then you will understand all the activities and functionality of Aarti leading her to that goal, what she wants to achieve. So everything that happens, thinking, ups and downs and all that, planning and all that, others, uh, agencies, they come to your help and achieving that goal. And that goal finally happens on a particular day, at a particular time, at a particular place. Yes. So that's how you will gradually understand, analyze all the evidences that came together to fulfill or realize that goal, fulfill that goal. Yes. And in that whole process, wherever you plan, as thinking, so are they planned that this, this should take five days and you start working on it. Now, anything that delays from that five days to 10 days, it is going to cause you pain. Yes, we get anything, anything that hastens that process, shortens that process, and instead of five days, if you finish in three days, you feel happy. Yes, excited. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. because it your planning was for five days, but it happened in three days. Yes. Like your planning was for five days, but the order, because you had to pass through certain suffering mm. of uh kind of getting delayed. Maybe in that delay, you are ending up spending more. And due to that delay, other repercussions are also there, yes. which you don't want to face, but you eventually face. Yes. Maybe you end up paying more and all that stuff. So 
that adds to your suffering. Mm -hmm. So yes. that is a part of Vyavasthi. Yes. That is nature. So all these goals, which ever make you do things, it gives you inspiration to do and you start doing it. And then all the process starts. All the agencies start working and then uh, it is realized. So once that is realized, you feel happy. But depending on the time frame and other things, in that process, you achieved your goal. Like uh, in your company, you wanted to have a higher position. You achieved that position, but then there are other people who also wanted that position yes. and they could not succeed. So now they are going to feel jealous. They are going to feel hurt. They are going to react one way or the other to you because otherwise you were together. Do you understand? Yes. So this, this is what happens. So in, in this life process, this is how things happen. But we as ego and with the realization, you have to play two parts. One part is of perceiving the whole drama yes. impartially mm -hmm. at the same time, depending on the situation and the state of your uh, job. In the sense, the uh, progress of your job, you have to give certain instruction, do certain things as part of your step. Yes. Make decisions, guide people, instruct others, et cetera, et cetera, all, so many things, which will make you reach your goal. Correct. So these two, two roles, like you are mother of your children and yes. you are wife also. Yes. You don't get, never get confused in playing this role. Yes. With the kids, you are mother. With the husband, you are wife. Perfect. No problem. No confusion. Now here, as you practice and become perfect, in the sense, you have clear understanding of these two roles of seeing and doing correctly. Mm. You will not have any problem. Yes. You will play your role. You know that the, the relative aspect, the worldly aspect is part of the karma, which you have no choice, but you have to do. Whatever results you get, you don't have to enjoy those results, but you have to understand that these results are of arti as result of the past karma. Yes. You are not arti. Because at the end of the day, when everything, all uh, worldly assignments are over, you are not left with any karma hmm. for which you have to pay attention or do anything. Yes. That's how you will experience liberation. Right. So now having realized who you are, you take care of artist's karma, mm -hmm. free yourself from all the burden of karma. When mm -hmm. it, because we are not projecting new ones. Mm -hmm. When all of them are over, you are done. Yes. You will emerge as pure soul, absolute knowledge only. Amazing. <laughs> okay. This is wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Heads of to Dada Bhagwan. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Our time is up. Namo Vitragai. Namo Vitragai. Namo Arihantanam. Namo Arihantanam. Namo Siddhanam. Namo Siddhanam. Namo Ayariyanam. Namo Ayariyanam. Namo Vazayanam. Namo Vazayanam. Namo Loe Savva Sahunam. Namo Loe Savva Sahunam. Esu Panchanamukaro. Esu Panchanamukaro. Savva Pava Panasano. Savva Pava Panasano. Mangalanam Chasavi Sim. Mangalanam Chasavi Sim. Adamam Havai Mangalam. Adamam Havai Mangalam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai. Om Namah Shivai. Om Namah Shivai. Jai Satchidanan. Jai Satchidanan.
Jai Satchidana. Jai Satchidana.